Welcome to the new season of the Live Your Spa Life Show. The Spa and Spa Life stands for Seek Power Always, that divine power within you to do what you're here to do. The theme for this season is Freedom Fighter. Amazing people like you share ways to ensure your freedom physically, financially, spiritually, and in your relationships to create a world-class life. In these times of uncertainty, it's time for you to move past the distractions and start trusting yourself more through your God-given knowingness. No one truly knows better what's best for you than you. In this season, you'll have plenty of examples of people choosing their best life and giving a voice of freedom to those who are also looking to have their best life. Thank you for sharing your precious time with us and being part of the Live Your Spa Life conversation. With us today is Julie Caraccio, an award-winning professional life and end-of-life organizer, certified life coach, and professional declutter. She is passionate about supporting people in clearing clutter in all areas of their life, getting organized, and becoming more mindful and aware. She is the host of the popular podcast, Clear Your Clutter, Inside and Out, and the author of 15 books. Julie, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, I too am very passionate about organizing and clearing your life. I think it is such a, a fundamental skill to be able to have. Mm -hmm. And I would love to start with your definition of clutter. So my definition of clutter is this. Clutter is anything that prevents you from creating the life you choose, deserve, and desire. So while most people focus on the physical, there's also mental and your relationships, health, emotional, spiritual. So it's important that we clear all of it. And as you clear one area of clutter, it supports you in clearing other areas as well. So for example, if you clear your space, then you gain mental clarity. Yes. I, I love that so much. You know, I was sharing with you that when I was doing organizing worth, I think it's so important for people to realize that it's not just the physical space, that it's all areas of your life. And in fact, um, one of the things uh, I like to share is an acronym. So we all can remember that is PIES. And so this is to get to the sweetness of life, the P-I-E-S. So it's the physical, the intellectual, the emotional, and the spiritual aspects of your life. And it helps people remember to look at all of it. Nice. So, uh, so you've also talked a little bit on your podcast about that the answer is always within you. I'd love for you to elaborate on that. Absolutely. So, you know, there are a lot of people out there that would like to lead us and tell us what to do, but we always know what's best for us. But sometimes with all the noise, society, our family, our friends, and everyone telling us, we don't get quiet to be able to listen to that little inner voice that said, hey, I'm here to guide you. I'm here to help you live your best life. And so it's about clearing all the noise, clearing all the clutter so that you can hear the guidance from within. You always know best. When I work with someone, they know what's best. I view my job as supporting them to bring that to the surface. That is such an important thing to know because I think so many times people will delegate to other people things that within themselves. And I think you can be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, an accountability person. You can, you can help people see the things that they're not seeing, but ultimately for people to really understand that. Um, another thing, when I was on the police department, I went into thousands of homes and I coined the term, the clutter to drama ratio, that the more clutter you had in your life, the more drama that you had in your life. And the reverse is true. Like you said, getting to that quiet place and that happening. And so when you start looking at what's happening around you, it also can be uh, you know, in our weight and the things that we're hiding behind and mm -hmm. clutter can be a way mm -hmm. that you hide from not having your true self be able to, to show up. And you talk about honoring your pace. Talk a little bit more about that. Well, first I need to interview you because I love that cr drama clutter ratio. I've never heard of that. And I think that that's fascinating. So you need to honor yourself and your beliefs, no matter what, because again, as I mentioned a moment ago, there are going to be people telling you, you know what? No, don't do this. When I first started my business, I was in the South and North Carolina. And I'm like, you know, I'm really into green. I'm into sustainable stuff. And they're like, oh no, you can't do that because you'll just, you'll, you won't survive. Your business will just fail. It didn't fail. I ended up winning awards for it because I was the first in the state to do it. So I honored who I was and brought that into my business. So that might be in another area of life, honoring yourself in a relationship. How many times do we just ignore what we need or what we're feeling, right? Well, I, I, I'm afraid to be 
outside of a relationship or not have anyone. So I'm just going to compromise myself. And that's what I mean about that. Honor your true self, being true to yourself and not compromising. Well, I'm not, I want to be clear. I'm not saying never compromise, but you know, and things that integrity and things that are really at the core of who you are, don't compromise on that. Right, right. Well, I love the distinction because I think it's so important when you know your values and you know who you are and what you stand for, then you're making decisions around those boundaries and those mm-hmm. those clarities that allow you then to have access to what's important to you and what those things look like. And, you know, something I think we've seen, particularly over the last couple of years, is that, you know, people have been in place of fear and they've delegated mm-hmm. their health. They've delegated, you know, what mm-hmm. other people think and not really looked at what is important for themselves and within themselves as well and to get just really clear in what that is. And I know one of the things that you've talked about in one of your podcasts about, um, you know, a call for people to stop being afraid, you know, talk about the fear aspect of things. We're either coming from fear or we're coming from love. And I also like to say we feel not good enough, not worthy enough for love because that's kind of expanding upon it a little bit. But if we're not in love, we're in fear, right? And you can look around, you mentioned that people, whether it's with healthcare relationships, we're afraid. And so that's where we operate from. And so if you can trust that you'll get what you need when you need it, you can trust that sometimes our fears are overblown. And so I do this thing when I'm afraid, I call take it down. It's really simple, but I'll have this, oh my gosh, you know, everything's going to explode, but realistically that's not going to happen. So, okay. The world's not going to explode tomorrow. Then take it down. Well, you know, there could be fighting that comes to America. Yes, there absolutely could. But how real is that? And so what I do is I just keep bringing it down to something that could truly realistically occur. And then most of the time I'm like, oh, I can handle that. Right? I've done that before. You know, we don't give ourselves enough credit. We, I know everyone listening and watching has overcome something, right? But we discount that, whether it's because we're off comparing ourselves or we don't give ourselves enough credit, but you have overcome a lot and you can overcome a lot. So break down the fear into something that's manageable. Absolutely. You know, there's something about to be said about sometimes we look at things and it's just, it's this huge thing and breaking it down into those manageable things about, okay, what is one aspect I can do? Like one step that Mm -hmm. you can do. In fact, one of my favorite quotes is take the first step no more, no less. And the next step will be revealed. That's Clement Watt. And so many times when we look at anything, we look at this huge thing. And I think clutter actually becomes intimidating for people because Mm -hmm. it is something that has happened over time. Uh, It's Mm -hmm. hard to look at it. It feels overwhelming. And so, you know, when people are looking at just the different aspects of clutter in their life, how do you help people take that first step? Well, first I want to say is that 10 minutes a day equals uh, over 60 hours a year. So you can get a lot accomplished by just chipping away at that. So if you're someone listening, feeling like I'm so overwhelmed, just know starting there, you'll be able to move forward. So it would depend, so starting with someone, you know, where are you most frustrated? Do you have a deadline? So if we're just talking about physical clutter, for example, and you have someone coming to put something in the garage. Okay. Then I've got to get the garage cleared by then. Or if you're not paying your bills on time, we need to start in the home office and clear that clutter because that's, you're losing money with that. Or if you're not having good health, let's start in the kitchen. You know, it really depends on if it's deadline driven, where they're most frustrated. If they're like, you know what, I just need to find peace of mind right now. Okay. Then we're going to carve out a little space for you to be able to do that. Right, right. I love the distinction with that. Uh, And speaking of which, you know, like mindset, you know, that is such a a big aspect of, you know, our mind gets filled with so many different things. And something I always like to say is that, you know, your mind can be a a bad neighborhood. You shouldn't go in there by yourself and it can be crowded and crazy in there. How do you help people win? Because a lot of times uh, negative thoughts, they're repetitive Mm -hmm. things, right? And we have more negative thoughts and positive thoughts. So we have to really shift that dynamic within ourselves. How do you help people declutter from the mind, from the inside out? Well, first I would say monitor your thoughts. Like someone once said to me, you know, you're, when I Facebook started, you're so negative on Facebook. I'm like, no, I'm not. And then I went and read my post like, Ooh, I had lack self-awareness in that area. So the first thing is pay attention. You know, I don't, you might know there's a statistic, what we have 10,000 or some crazy amount of thoughts a day. So begin by paying attention. I also say to become present because in my experience, a lot of our mental clutter is, oh, I should have, would have from the past, or I'm worried about the future. 
let's get present, right? Because the po present moment is our point of power to change. I can't change the past. I've tried really hard on numerous occasions and it hasn't happened. And the future is written in pencil. But what I do in this moment is going to create my future. So let's become becoming present, be more mindful and aware of our thoughts. And that's a starting place. And you can say, oh, I didn't realize that I complained on Facebook all the time. Well, what is it really about? Well, I don't feel hurt. Okay, well, who do, oh, maybe I don't feel hurt in my marriage. Maybe I don't feel hurt at work. Where is it that I need to say, okay, I need to be heard. And then you can take steps that way. Right. But, you know, I think it's so important to just ask yourself, where are you at? And, you know, if you are, you know, in the past or you're projecting into the future, you're not being present. And I think that's one of the most challenging things for people is to be mm -hmm. in the present moment. And um, what are some of the steps to kind of help people stay in that present moment and really make decisions from that place to really ground themselves and from that come, come from place? Always breath. That's the first thing when in doubt, breathe. So if you can just slow down, stop, close your eyes. And you know, when you close your eyes, you can get more centered. You have the distractions. And that's why I also like when you want to listen to the wisdom within, if you have your eyes open, the ego is more easily going to pop up. So close your eyes, take a couple deep breaths. You mentioned grounding. I think grounding is a, is a great tool. You know, there are different videos that you can listen to or watch on that. So get grounded, get your breath and become centered. Okay, I'm just going to calm down. I'm just going to get centered. Ask myself, what do I need in this moment? What do I need right now? Because it might surprise you. Maybe you need a nap. Maybe you need a snack. Maybe you need to go for a walk, right? And so then that gets us right present instead of the past or the future. Right. You know, for, for those listening, I know sometimes people hear like, you know, focus on your breath or take a deep breath. And they're like, oh, I've heard that before. But I just invite people to, you know, if you're multitasking or doing something else, actually stop for a second yes. and actually hear that because people don't realize that taking a deep breath, that is actually the number one thing you can do for your health. And when you take a deep breath, that directly puts oxygen into your brain and allows you to think clearly instantaneously. And without getting those deep breaths into our brain, we can't have clarity of thought. So if you're in confusion or you're having a lot of things going on, you want to be able to come from that place. So don't discount that because that is gold, what yeah. she just said right there. <laughs> and I want you to notice, do you have tension in your jaw? right? Because uh, people, oh, breath's not going to help with anything. Or do you have the Buddha belly? Like I was literally told, oh, suck it in. Well, you know, that's not good. Let it, brr. my tummy is out right now, working on unclenching my teeth, because these are some subconscious things that we do, right? We don't realize, oh, I'm holding in all that tension and breath work can help show you that. Right. Absolutely. So one of the things that uh, we discuss here on this show is uh, disempowering experiences, things that really kind of took us out of the game or didn't help us. And you've talked to me before about not knowing your worth. And I'd love for you to share a little bit about that. Yeah. So I would say for a long time, so I'm someone, I don't buy a lot of shoes. I buy personal growth work and, you know, work with people <laughs> and, and read books and classes and all that good stuff. So I didn't think I was worthy enough because the message that I got from childhood and, you know, it's, I don't want to stay in the victim mentality it is what it is. I believe I choose my parents. I choose my life. So I have to own it because that doesn't allow me to be a victim. But I didn't think I was worth much. And so in romantic relationships, I was a doormat and I'm probably being generous with that. And so then one day I was like, well, I'm not happy. And my brother actually said to me, and I love him and he's a lot younger and not into all this spiritual stuff. And he said, you see yourself as a victim. And in that moment I could hear him. So I was like, hmm, hmm, that's right. Well, what does that mean? What do I do for that? How do I move forward? And so when I was able to begin the process of not seeing myself as a victim, I own my life. I took responsibility for it. I'm like, I am worthy. This is this false belief for different people throughout my life saying you aren't good enough. And that's not true. Every one of us watching and listening is worthy. You're good enough. You're worthy and love no matter what. I don't care. You are not your worst mistake. Sometimes they go, oh, I'm a bad person because I did this. We all mess up. I'm on a spiritual path. I'm going up that spiral and sometimes I slide down. So I'm just going to encourage everyone, you do have worth. And when you have worth, you don't tolerate those bad relationships. You don't tolerate a crappy job. And I think that there are a lot of people, I know I wasn't alone and I know that people today still don't see them. So you are worthy no matter what. 
such an important message. You know, tolerations is, is, is a key word that you said there because there's so much that people will tolerate, whether it's the clutter in their space or their relationships mm -hmm. or, you know, the, the mind trash that's going on within them and really understanding and having awareness around what your tolerations are and what's happening and making that step. And, uh, you know, I so appreciate talking about, you know, the whole, uh, victim. And, and a lot of people will say that there's a lot of victim culture going on that everyone's mm -hmm. had stuff happen, you know, whatever degree of what that is or what that looks like, we get to choose how we want to say how that served you, how you learn something from it, how it actually becomes part of your message that you can help others move through that. You know, mm -hmm. we can either be a victim or a victor and we get to choose through our words and our, our incorporation of our life of how we're going to view that for us and to use it as, as a step up into our next iteration of ourselves and, and how we're going to choose about, about how we're going to be. And the, the other side of that about standing in your power um, you talked a little bit about making the professional personal. I'd love for you to share and expand on that. So if you are, whether you're a coach, whether you're an author, it is you, you are your business. And so you can't separate who you are personally from your professional business. You know, at the beginning, I talked about how I was into sustainability and being green and people are like, oh, you can't do that. Well, I can't separate who I am. And it doesn't mean I'm going to hold a gun to someone's head and say, you have to do this but it's who I am. And so I would incorporate that in my business. So whatever's going on in your personal life is going to be reflected in your professional life and vice versa. So if you have a cluttered home, it's going to affect you at work. You know, if you have cluttered relationships at work, it's going to affect your home life. So it's all related. And I just, if I can take a moment to share something about trigger warnings and content warnings. So I see that a lot. And I'm going to encourage people to take a different perspective on that, right? Because at first I was like, CW, what's that? I had no idea what that was and had to Google it. And so we put up these trigger warnings. We put up these content warnings thinking we're helping ourselves because, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to see it because that's going to trigger me and that's going to upset me. I'm going to encourage you to view that as something coming up to be healed, right? Because obviously it upsets you, but that's a good thing. That's saying, hey, I'm upset. I need to feel this. I need to clear this emotional clutter. And, you know, if we don't express our emotions, they stay stuck in our energy field. Everything's energy. And so if we say, oh, I'm afraid of that and I don't want to look at that, it's going to come out in some way, shape or form. So I encourage people to say, oh, you know, this is potentially to heal me. And as much as you might try to put up content warning and trigger warning, then when you go to the post office, you go to the grocery store, something's going to trigger you. So view that as a chance to heal. Yeah, I, I think that is, is so important because I think everything pops up for a reason, right? It, it's mm -hmm. there to help us and to support us. And so if it's there, it's meant for us to look at and to really determine, okay, what is this message for me? Like, what is it? Why did this pop up for me? What's the reason? Why did it show up? And, and all of those different things. And, it, and I just, I love that distinction as well, because it's like, you know, wherever you go, there you are, right? And, and yeah. you know, whether you're at home or you're, you know, with your family or, or you're, you know, out recreating, you like whatever that is, you bring you. And so, yeah. you know, that is the part that, that shows up. And so I know one of uh, your favorite activities is hiking. And so one of the things I'd love for you to share is, because I think some really special things happen when you're out in nature. And I think that you have this clarity um, where you actually get some of your best thoughts. So I'd love for you to share one of your hiking experiences where you just had, you know, an aha awareness. Let me think about that, because I hike a lot. Uh, and I think you're right. And, you know, I would encourage people do research on trees and hugging trees. They found that the new thing is tree bathing. I know they do it a lot in Japan, but it's it shown you the, the empirical evidence that it does, that does support you. Hmm. I'm trying to think, I think probably one that, gosh, this was a while ago. So I lived in Vermont and I hiked every weekend, a very granola crunchy culture. I loved it. And so I was up in Burlington. And so hiking in the green mountains in Vermont and just looking out in awe and trusting that everything was going to be okay. Cause I was making a huge, I was leaving Vermont. I was leaving my career going on to the next step and just the expansiveness and knowing like, you know what? The universe has my back. Like I am part of this vast awesomeness and it's not all about me and I'm part of this. And what I put out, I'm adding or taking away from all of us. And so just being impressed with, the grandness of the all and understanding I'm huge at once as well as a teeny tiny part of everything. 
Oh, that's so great. You know, I think it's so important. I think that when things feel like uh, a lot's on the plate and a lot's going on or a decision has to be made, I think just walking out into nature and just going, you know what, God made things just huge and mass and expansive. And, you know, we're like a little part of the puzzle. And when we look at the grandness of that, it can kind of get us back into perspective and, and really have yes. a, a big understanding. And um, one of my favorite questions I like to ask my guests is that we have different experiences, how we live in the kitchen versus the you know bathroom, the you know your office, your bedroom, whatever that is. What is your favorite room in your home and why? Uh, we're going to have to go with bathroom because I am a bath girl. I every night have a bath. That's part of my daily ritual. And so a lot of my great ideas come in the bathtub, but it's just time for me. Like really I can close the door. It's just me. I can relax. I have bubble bath, the scent, a lot of times read, or I'll just kind of hang out there and I get a lot of inspiration. So that's kind of my little special place. Nice. So I know you refer to your bathtub as your woman cave. And uh, I do. <laughs> what are some of your best thoughts you've gotten in there? Uh, well, I thought was to, to start the podcast that kind of popped into my head. Uh, and then writing books was another one. Oh, and then business name, because I was like, well, I should say I did a show and then don't ever change your business name. I did that. But anyway, I was like, Oh, thrive. And I kept thinking some thrive and I'm like, eh, eh, eh. and all of a sudden it's like, it just came from the universe and boom, popped in the top of my head, reawaken your brilliance. I'm like, there you go. I Googled, there's nothing like that going on. I can't get any in trouble with anyone. And so that was another great moment as well too. Right. Right. You know, I love the distinction there on reawaken, right? Because we show up in the world as awakened beings and we are in our own brilliance. And I love Love the name of your business because it just reminds people that you know you can reawaken that right you can redo mm -hmm. anything and when you look at what's going on it doesn't necessarily define who you are with where you are in the moment i think that's the beauty of uh you know decluttering and organizing mm -hmm. is that you discover new aspects of yourself and so i'd love for you to share a little bit about you know as uh either yourself or some of your clients have you know really decluttered the different aspects of your life. What are some of the awarenesses that have come out of that? Well, I would say that it is okay to ask for what you want, particularly in relationships. No, I can't ask for it. All. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. Leaving relationships because of that awareness. You know what? This isn't working out for me and I'm not happy. You know, no judgment on anything, no right or wrong saying and stepping up to a career they always wanted to have the courage to go for it instead of always saying, uh, you know what? Mm -mm, I'm afraid. And I think beating fear overall for a lot of people, because that's really what it comes from, but saying, you know what, I'm going to take charge of my life. I know I'm good enough. And it's okay if someone criticizes me, right? It's okay. If I put my sculpture out there, it's not going to be for everyone, but you know what? this is what I'm passionate about and this is what I want to do. Right. Yeah. I think that is a really important aspect is when you really peel away all of those layers and you kind of see yourself and it can feel very exposing, but really when you've peeled everything else away, there's no more excuses and there's no more other things out yeah. there, then you can show up as your best self and you can really show up in, in that way. So, um, you know, I know that, that, People are going to want to stay in contact with you, Julie, and we're going to put all your links and things uh, in the show notes. But is there any um, particular way that you um, like to either share or ways that you like people to connect with you best? If they go to my re my website, reawakenyourbrilliance.com, and I've got a free assessment so they can figure out their clutter priority, sign up for my newsletter, and you'll find all my links, all my books, everything's there, and how to get in touch with me. And I want everyone listening to know you're good enough, you're worthy, and you're loved, and you have gifts to share with the world. And when you clear your clutter, you can share those gifts, and the world needs your gifts now more than ever. Oh, so great. You know, as you know, our theme for this season is freedom fighters, the way that people are fighting for freedom uh, in their life in many different ways. Um, in what way are you being a freedom fighter in your life today? Well, I had thought a couple of these. I'm very passionate about the environment, very passionate about animals, but it's my, I've decided is about being a woman over 50 and 
sharing that we can do whatever we put our minds to, that we don't have to be put in these boxes, that people, these standards of beauty and about aging and being afraid to age, we can embrace it, right? We don't have to say that if I don't look like that, then I'm not worthy. Absolutely not. It's about really coming into your own power after 50. It was like, for me, this aha moment, like, I don't care. It doesn't mean I don't care about everything or things that are important. I should say, I don't care about the the junk. I don't care about the clutter. I don't care about the stuff. Doesn't matter. You don't like me. Okay. That's okay. I'm going to move forward. Not everyone's going to like me and just fully embracing being an aging woman. Uh, I, I think that is is so great and and so apropos with uh, you know the title of our podcast the whole seek power always in spa spa life and that whole it's that divine power within you and I think as you get older you really realize that you're you have a short time here and you don't mm-hmm. have time to mess with the frivolities of just the craziness yeah. you know the the things that don't matter and to get really clear on what matters to you and I think that. Um, sometimes it's overlooked the wisdom that people share as they get older. And, Mm -hmm. you know, those experiences are gold. And those are some of the things that we can really share with other people as we get older. So I think that is such a a great and powerful message. And I just want to thank you so much for sharing your journey, your wisdom, and your experiences with us here today. Thanks so much for having me. And thank you for sharing your gifts with the world. Uh, Thank you. And for our listeners out there, you know, without you sharing and expanding this message out here, you help us get that one message to that one person who needs to hear it. And until we connect again, live your spa life. Bye for now. Bye-bye. 